Right, essential bushcraft kit. Um, sorry, I tricked you. There's no essential bushcraft kit. You can take what you like. There's some things that are more helpful. Um, it's entirely up to you. I've made a list of the things that I like to take. I've tried to make this a little bit different to all the other videos because there's a whole bunch of videos out there that's all about knives and saws and axes. Um, I'll, I'll briefly cover them, but I want to try and add in a few things that nobody really talks about. So I'll blast through the, the quick stuff first. Obviously a knife, like I live in Scotland and it's always wet here. So I have a stainless steel blade. Um, I also have a carbon blade. But I tend not to use it too much because I find the stainless steel is just dead easy to maintain and it's it's really sharp and I still get a good spark off it. So yeah, um this is a Kersarandu I think it's a one a hundred mil blade um Scandi grind and I put my own handle on it. So I should probably neaten up the blade a bit, it's a bit manky, but that's that. Um, folding saw, I take a Baco Laplander. I'm actually thinking about getting a silky, um, big boy, I think they're called, because they look amazing, so I want to try one of them out. But I've always had these, and they're brilliant. I painted the top yellow, because you put this down in the mud or in the grass, really hard to find. I, I don't really massively like camouflage tools, um, so I've, I've got a big yellow bit on there just to, to make it easier to spot and um, they're both in sheaths so nice and handy um oh yeah and an axe if you check out my other videos you'll see all about that axe it's the uh halt of first chopping axe but anyway enough about that head torch you want to get a cree head torch don't bother with the cheap little ones with like 20 LEDs and stuff like that, they're just, they're, they're too rubbish and you chew up your batteries. The Cree bulbs are really, really good. Um, this is an Energizer one. Um, I, I like this one, it, it works really good. Um, yeah, you, you want to kind of avoid the, I think they sell them on eBay quite a lot. And they claim to have like a million lumens and they've got these like three big, torches and a big like car battery stuck to the back of your head and stuff like that massive big things uh, they chew through batteries really fast and they are really bright and it's amazing but to be honest when you're sitting around a campfire and stuff like that you'll be giving your friends on the other side a sunburn it's yeah it's too much you don't really need that much light um, this is an energizer one and i don't actually know what one it is but you look at it there it's got the green around the edge i think it's the only one that they make that's got this sort of strap um yeah that's i've had it for a long time i actually lost it out in the woods and um great thing about it being bright is that i found it again but it spent a month out in the woods lying in the mud getting snowed on and rained on everything like i say for a month i found it and um, managed to get back to the same spot and uh, yeah, there it was, just sitting in the mud, picked it up, washed it off in the river, turned it on, and works perfect. So, really good quality, dead easy to change the batteries, uh, just just simple, good bit of kit. So, really like that. DD tarp, you know, like I say, this is all stuff that's in a lot of other videos. Three meters by three meters tarp, that's a really good size. If you're going on a budget, you can get the camouflage, um, just normal poly tarps. Uh, I think they're about 10 or something like that, not even. Um, and they're usually 3 meters by 2.4, something like that. Um, they're brilliant. I've bought them lots of times. They'll do for putting up a hammock, um, a lot of jobs. 3 meters is pretty much your best sort of length for like head to toe. And... Uh, yeah, any tarp will do really. It's just, you know, whatever you like. Obviously like the DD tarps and stuff like that. You spend a bit more money, you buy a tarp like that, you'll have it for a decade rather than the cheap poly tarps you'll have for maybe a year. So, um, that's interesting. Oh yeah, flint rod, just for making fires, having fun. 
don't need to go into too much detail. When you're starting out, take a lighter as well because there's a good chance that you, you won't get a, a fire going, you know, with a flint rod. And you don't want to get all demoralised and have a crap night. You want to you wanna have a good time. So take it as a backup. Um, some people might hate me for that, but I don't care. Lighters are good. They work. They make fire. Um, so once you learn a flint rod, that's great. But until then, make sure you got a lighter as well. Um, something nobody actually seems to talk about, which is really bizarre because... When you're going out to the woods, you're taking all this stuff, all these sharp tools. And, um, yeah, take a first aid kit. Because I don't know any bushcrafter who's not cut themselves. So you're going out to these remote places, far away from help. you got to deal with stuff if you cut yourself, especially if you cut yourself badly. you got to have stuff in your first aid kit that you can stop the bleeding, sort it out. And, you know, if you have to, head home. So, it's really, really important to have a good first aid kit and know how to use it as well. Like, I'm not saying you need to go on a first aid course or anything like that, but maybe watch some YouTube videos on just how to deal with deep cuts and just have a, a pretty good idea of what you need to do. Like, even if it's just theory-based, um, it'll just help you, give you a bit more confidence and stop you, like, tourniqueting your mate's leg when he's only got a little cut. So... <laughs> yeah, just um, something to bear in mind. It's a really handy piece of kit and I actually take my first aid kit everywhere with me. And I put it in a dry bag because, you know, if you ever end up leaving your backpack out in the rain or you fall in a river or anything silly like that, you don't want to wreck your first aid kit. So if, you, if it's in a nice dry bag, it's safe, it's protected, and that's all good. Paracord, rope, yeah, you need, well, probably all of the above. Um, I like to take a bit of rope just for my main um, rope for my tarp. And um, and then I use paracord just to tie off the corners. This cheap stuff, this is the cheap thing you can get on eBay. It's like £10 for 100 metres. It's not seven strand or anything like that. It's, you know, it's fine. It, does stretch a little bit, but it, it's fine. You know, you can use it for a lot of things. And I, I think it's great because you get 100 meters for 10 pounds. You get the seven strand 550 power cord, which is also really good. If you can afford it, go for that. It's better, but there's a lot of jobs that it's kind of overkill for. It's, it's really strong and it lasts ages, but I tend to only use it for like, nice things you know <laughs> like if i if i want to put like a, a lanyard on my axe or you know things like that um i use the better stuff but for a million random little jobs i just use the cheap stuff and it, it saves you a lot of money in the long run so yeah and rope like i say what else we got oh yeah something nobody else really talks about is a sleeping bag now it kind of goes without saying obviously you go out camping you're going to take a sleeping bag, but there's a big difference between just a sleeping bag that you get out of, like, I don't know, Argus or something like that, that doesn't have any actual ratings on it. Uh, you want to get yourself a sleeping bag that's got, like, a comfort temperature, like, obviously we're in Scotland, so, you know, this is sort of relevant to where we live. If you live in the Bahamas, then you maybe don't have to worry about this so much. But in Scotland, you want to get something that's got at least a comfort temperature rating of minus two or minus three, something below zero. Um, I'm actually, at the moment, I'm using the DD Dura 2 sleeping bag. Uh, I just switched. I had this one for years and years and years, and it's served me really well. And I recently switched to the, the DD one. I'm actually finding it um, not, not quite as warm as this one. Which is surprising because it's got, I think it's got a comfort temperature rating of minus five. And this one's got a comfort temperature rating of minus four to one degree. But I find this one's actually warmer. And I think it's because of the way this one's made. It's the Mountain Warehouse Microlite 1400. And it's, it's made out of like a, a microfiber stuff, which I think is kind of like fleece. 
and don't quote me on that, but it, basically it doesn't puff up like a normal sleeping bag. You don't have to leave it to air or anything like that. You can just sort of roll it out and jump in it. And I think that works really good in hammocks and situations like, you know, if you're lying on logs or whatever, because it doesn't need to be all puffy. So you stay warm, even when it's a little bit wet. I've had it quite damp before and it's kept me warm. I find this is really good and it's also like £20 cheaper than the DD one. So I think it's about £45 or something like that. It's really not an expensive sleeping bag and I've not had any troubles with it. I've slept all through many, many winters, um, you know, out in the snow, cold, whatever. And I'm actually thinking about using this again for the rest of the winter instead of my DD one. So that's something to bear in mind. Right, the DD one is brilliant and I'm really looking forward to using that in the spring, but I find just these, yeah, that, it's comfort temperature rating of minus five. I would say it's maybe more like zero to five degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, that's just my opinion. Don't hate me for it, but yeah, that's, that's a really good sleeping bag if you're thinking about getting one for winter. So yeah, what we got left. Oh yeah, simple little thing, Ziploc bags. Now, instead of buying a whole bunch of dry bags that, especially if you buy the cheaper dry bags and don't even keep your stuff dry, they, yeah, I find they're just kind of useless compared to Ziploc bags. Ziploc bags, you can have four or five different ones in your pack. You know, you can have your food in one, you can have some dry socks and underpants in the other one. All this different stuff, and when you go rummaging in your bag to find stuff, you can see exactly what you got because all the bags are clear. So it's really, really handy. They're 100% waterproof. They're so cheap, you can get 15 large Ziploc bags for less than a pound. I think that's out of home bargains. And, you know, they're, they're a decent size. And I use them all the time. I love them. Like, see for packing my food. Um, but yeah, you can get enough food for a full sort of day, night and morning in one bag and it's it's just brilliant. So yeah, use them a lot. And you can also like technically poach eggs and things in them. And yeah, a million uses for a clear plastic bag. <laughs> so, something else I'll take, leather gloves. Now these can be like regular or like worker gloves and things like that. Um, gardening gloves, you can you can pick any kind of glove you want any kind of budget. I just found these in a charity shop and they work brilliantly. Um, keep my hands nice and warm. They're also great for if you're carving something, you're worried about cutting yourself, maybe if you're doing something quite intricate, they're easy to slip and cut yourself. So having a leather glove on just protects your, your hand that's not holding the knife and saves you, you know, having to use your first aid kit. <laughs> so um, yeah, something else you really, 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 really don't want to forget. Toilet paper. I, some people might like to use moss. Personally, I don't really like it. So, don't forget your toilet paper. <laughs> um, usually what I have along with that is just, well this is actually a poncho, just for emergencies if I end up in a pickle. It's also a big bright orange thing, so a bit of a safety thing. If I do end up, you know, if somebody gets hurt or anything like that and you want to draw attention to yourself. If everybody's out in the woods and you're all wearing camouflage gear, it's really hard to get found, you know? Whereas if you've got a big orange thing, spread it out, they find you easy. So I always carry that. And there's a whistle in my first aid kit. I forgot to mention that. Um, so yeah, just general safety stuff. Um, what else we got? Oh yeah, usually take a pot. This is a zebra pot. Um, the only thing I've done to it is when you first buy them, they come with a little plastic clip thing here that holds the handle up and clamps the lid on. It's handy if you're only going to use your pot on a, a gas stove or you know, like a camping stove. But if you're going to be hanging this over the fire, the first thing you want to do when you get it is to um, break them off because, well, they'll just end up melting down the side of your pot and making a big mess, which is what mine did when I first got it. So save yourself any hassle there. Just, um, I thought they were Bakelite. I wasn't sure if they would be all right in the fire, but after about a minute or two, they were all melted down inside. So yeah, 
It's all right, I got them off, but yeah, if you buy a zebra pot, you want to take them off. And I think that's pretty much it. Like, there's obviously other bits of kit that are handy, and I'm constantly changing the kit I use. But hopefully that's a few things that, you know, if you're new to bushcraft, I'm sort of gave you a right idea. Like, mostly it's just the first aid kit, because nobody seems to ever talk about that. And a good sleeping bag, because if you don't get a good night's sleep, then, well, everything's just rubbish. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, yeah, if you like my channel, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. If you think I missed out anything really important, leave it in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.